Should we go ahead and start? Ready, Sarah? I'm, I'm ready when you, it's your meeting. I'm ready whenever you are. Okay. Hi. Hi. Nancy? Okay, well, it's 10 o'clock. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Dana Melton, and I'm president of Lynn County Retired Teachers and Public School Personnel. And I'm going to thank Pamela Hardy in advance because I don't want to forget later. I'm the president, but she did all the work to get this together. So we kind of operate as an officer team, but um, I just want to say how much I appreciate her help with this. And I appreciate um, Sarah. <laughs> and, yeah, Sarah and Pamela. Good job. Um, well, we're not going to be taking any breaks. If you need to get up, feel free to do that because you can mute your video and we won't even know. Um, we're recording the meeting and uh, we had like committee reports and other information uh, emailed out to everyone on Wednesday. So you should have those. You know, we try to keep Zoom meetings a little bit shorter because you get Zoom fatigue. So <coughs> taking some steps to try to shorten them up a little bit. Um, we hope you got those prior to this meeting. So we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance and Sarah has that set up. Okay, and I'm gonna mute everybody because if you guys try to say the Pledge of Allegiance, it gets weird with the sound. So I'm gonna mute you. <laughs> but we found a, out, yeah. yeah. For just a few minutes. Okay, so just one or well, 30 seconds. Hold on one moment here. And I will mute all. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, so now you can unmute yourself, I'm sorry. Thanks. So um, first, our first speaker is our 2021 MRTA president, Nancy Craig. She's going to talk about her theme and let us know all those things. Nancy, you're still muted. You see the microphone in the lower left-hand corner? You should be able to click it. Sorry, I messed you up when I muted everybody. There you go. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes. Okay, good morning. Uh, actually, uh, this is a, another one of my road trips. I am doing an MRTA road trip and I want you all to join me and you have, look at all these people. So I'm just really excited to be with you this morning. I was uh, at uh, Van Buren on, uh, when was I on there? Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. And <laughs> on this road trip, it, it's, it's really a fast thing. So, uh, but my companion and I, who is in her house right now, uh, anyway, uh, she and I have been on the road now. This is my third um, region meeting. So uh, it's, it's really exciting to be with you. And um, I, I, I've heard a lot about AMBA this, this, on this trip, and I'm gonna learn a lot more. I see Gary with us. Uh, I have heard uh, from your committee reports, which are marvelous, by the way. You guys do such a great job with those committee reports. And it, it's really, really good that you're here to listen to those because it's, uh, that's, this is, your committee reports are MRTA, a big part of it. So uh, what I'd like to do today is, uh, well, actually, if you'll, can you see this? This is my road trip. You see all the colors? You're in there somewhere. That, those are all the regents of uh, Missouri Retired Teachers Association. And I get the pleasure of, of joining you at every one of these region meetings. I was really looking forward to coming to yours. I've never really explored your part of the state. 
And I was really looking forward to that. And then you messed me up and put me on Zoom. So, I, <laughs> but anyway, uh, I, I, I'm grateful that I'm here. So um, I, I want you to remember or remind you that there are four really good reasons why retirees need MRTA. I didn't say join, I said need MRTA. And the first one is the biggie, the legislation. The, the Missouri state legislators are um, last year were very anti-public education. Well, that's where we have our hearts in public education. So uh, you need MRTA to keep you informed about what the legislators are doing and how you can help uh, the, the active teacher by staying informed and informing them, and which is the second reason why uh, retirees need MRTA advocacy. You need to be their advocate. They are teaching. They are making uh, curriculum. They are planning what they're going to do that day. They're not worried about their pension at the moment. They're not worried about uh, their school district going under because they are not funded properly. They're not worried about that right now. We can do that. We can help them uh, inform them about what's going on with their school districts, with their state legislators, and get them informed. So I think that is a really important. And you know when we do that a lot is by the grant presentations. These teachers, these active teachers, uh, apply for their $500 grants, and we have gotten into more St. Louis City, St. Louis County, St. Louis City schools uh, by by giving $500 grants away. It gets our name out there. It gets a, It's very, very positive for us. And I take my message, just what I'm telling you, to them. And I have had more active teachers go by me and say, thank you, keep it up. And, and we are actually protecting their retirement. We have our retirement. We won't outlive our retirement, but it, we, uh, you know, we, are helping them. So, and there's a purpose. Um, in our bylaws on September 15th, or September 14th, actually, the uh, delegates, and I don't know, uh, Jane was there. I don't know if anybody else was at the annual meeting, but okay. in our bylaws, uh, we approved, yeah, Sarah was there. Uh, and, uh, and Gary was there. Anyway, uh, we approved that 90-year-old members could become lifetime members. And as I'm going around to my road trip, I am asking each region, do you have a 90-year-old member that you would like to give a lifetime membership in MRTA? So that's my question to you today, Adana. Do you have a member? Do you know of a member? Uh, and she might be right here, Carol Lee Hall. I loved your presentation as a distinguished retiree, by the way. You are such a cute little person. How, how are you approaching 90? Are you 90 yet? You're close, I'll bet. Mom, you're muted again. Yeah. I'm not. Is she? She is. She's 85. I, I haven't got the 90 yet. I'm 85. Not yet. Okay. Well, I, I, yeah, I'm not quite there either but 80s looking really young right now. So, um, but if you, if you guys know of anybody in your uh, region, in your units that are 90 years old, we will send you a certificate and they will become lifetime members of MRTA. So, oh, and um, I got in my, uh, in Van Buren, I heard a new assistant director for PSRS speak, and he gave me a new fact sheet, and I love this. All right, do you know that there are 1,849 MRTA members that are 90 to 94 years old? 1,849, all right? There are 453 of us that are 95 to 99, and he said, as of Tuesday, 
there are 68 over 100 years old. And, and there is one, and I don't know where they are, but one is 112. And as of Tuesday, that person was still alive. So uh, I just, you, you can't kill an old teacher. You just can't. <laughs> and, and all of you want your retirement until you're 112. I know I do. I, I really have a shot at 100. So that's my goal. So anyway, that's our purpose. Our purpose is to keeping keep ourselves alive to uh, to benefit the active teacher and to to help our communities. Did you know that in in this on this map? Can you see this right there? That you're there, and your money goes to help the state of Missouri. Your retirement, you spend it. I know I spend every dime almost every month. <laughs> so I'm helping the state of Missouri stay afloat. I am helping the active teacher have a job. I, I just, you know, it's very important that we, that your, your representatives and your senators and, and the state of Missouri know that we are important to the state and they should know that and they should not mess with our pension. Okay. Nancy, I have a quick question for you. Does it say on there how many how much money goes into Missouri's economy each year? Because I, I used to know the number and I don't know what it is. And I thought that'd be interesting for you to share. Okay. How much money? Uh, oh, total? Right out, underneath yes. or on top of the map. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. It's the total annual benefits paid were nearly $3.2 billion. Of this amount, more than 2.8 billion dollars or 89 percent was distributed among Missouri's 114 counties positively impacting the state's economy. So are you important MRTA? Yes you are and they know they need to know that. You want it again? It's 2.8 billion dollars with a B. How about that, gang? So that's my message, too, to all of you. And um, I have uh, something I want to just close with. And if you have any questions, I probably can answer it, or Sarah can answer it, or somebody can answer it. Oh, the fourth reason? The fourth reason is coming up. The fourth reason, oh, and look at the bulldog, isn't he cute? <laughs> all right. Uh, the fourth reason is MRTA member discounts. And Gary's going to tell you all about those. They are so neat. They are helping me get around the state. I'm going to take advantage of Amba's discounts, Gary DeVito. Okay. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. I have, um, I had a very good uh, member uh, of my team in Region 8. I'm in Region 8. And uh, during my, my stint as a uh, vice president, I was vice president for 11 years. I missed my 12th. Uh, vice president year because I was pr a vice president of MRTA. So that's the only reason I, they let me uh, not be. But anyway, uh, as vice president, I had a great legislative team. And one of the um, chairs, the state chairs, MRTA state chairs, was Jack Jordan. And Jack Jordan lived to be 79 years old. He died in April uh, of 2020. So um, they had his memorial service. And during the time when he was retired and, and everything, he kept a journal. And I'm keeping a journal of my road trip. So if Sarah wants to know where I was at a particular day, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have it in my road trip journal. Anyway, I wanna, I wanna leave you with a little bit of Jack Jordan's journaling. The race is won by taking one hurdle at a time. You cannot control everything. You know that teachers, you can't control everything. Life simply has its ups and downs. And 2020 was not an up and down, it was a black hole. So everything that went into 2020 stayed in 2020. I can't remember what I did from one month to the next. <laughs> Only I didn't do it well. Sometimes you just need to suck it up. I love that one. And then the very last one, uh, Jack Jordan was a principal of a middle school, mm. girls and boys, a middle school. 
So, you know, uh, that was, <laughs> I taught in a middle school for over 20 years and that some days it can be really, really challenging. You know how they are. Uh, so there are times in life you stumble, and he was the principal for, I don't know how many years, of, of a middle school in St. Louis County. So he had all kinds of kids. There are times in life you stumble across, stumble across something that really works. The simple phrase I used to bring order to a crazy day was, today is not a good day to be sent to my office. <laughs> Don't you just love that? I love that. And I love you guys. And I'm glad that I'm here for your, your Region 8. Oh, we've got a whole bunch. Look at Lewis County. Hi, Lewis County. That's a good idea. Are you at church? Where are you? That's a good idea. All right. And it's good to see all of you. I'm, I'm going to have a slideshow. Sarah's going to help me and get a slideshow for September 2022. So um, I'll be there and I want all of you there. It's going to be exciting. You'll be part of my slideshow. So smile. I'm going to take your picture. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. 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 Thank you, Nancy. And we would have liked to have seen you in person too. Yeah, I really was. It really was looking forward to it. Yeah. Um. Uh, now I'm going to recognize our LCRT PSP unit officers. So. When, it, when I call your name, you wave. I'm the president. I already introduced myself. Um, Dana Harmon is our vice president, and she is still teaching part-time, so she may pop in during um, a, a break, but she may not. Uh, secretary is Pamela Hardy. She's Hello. With you. And our treasurer and membership chairman is Linda Shaw. Hello. So those that's our officer team. Our Region 3 Vice President and Chairperson is Jane Callis. And um, we're going to have a little report from each of our Region 3 Committee Chairpersons. Um, it was sent in, it was compiled by Sarah, and uh, that document was sent out to you. They made me a script, I'm reading it, guys, so if you hadn't figured that out. Um, for efficiency of our meeting time, but we would like to recognize the chairperson. So they're going to wave at you, and, and if they have a few words to say, we welcome that also. Um, so here we go. Vice President Jane Callis from Paris, Missouri. <laughs> She's, she makes the rounds. You get around, don't you, Jane? <laughs> Our legislative chairperson is Becky Osborne from Kirksville, Missouri. There she is. She's up in the corner on my screen. Um, membership is Donna Myers from Shelbyville, but she's not here. Uh, retirement education is Dale Bagley from Macon. There he is waving at you. And um, community service is Rhonda McBee from Memphis, Missouri, and she's not here today. Lucky girls on vacation. <laughs> so um, informative and protective services, Linda Lukenhoff from Ewing. And Linda is also the state informative and protective services chairperson. So do we see you, Linda? No. There she is. Yeah. Where, where is she? She's at the Lewis County Lewis MRTA. Oh, there she group. is. Okay. Yeah. Great. And um, then, let's see, Region 2021, Region 3 Distinguished Retiree Recognition is Mark Lukenhoff, husband to Linda. There he is. There right he is. Doing. Yeah. And our 2020 Region 3 Distinguished Retiree and MRTA Retiree of the Year recognition 
is recognition is Carolee Hall. Carolee, can you wave at us? There you go. Okay. Um, and then Sarah, did you have something to play for that? I do. Hold on one second. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to turn the sound on. So this is Carolee's speech from last year. This is so good. Yeah. Your screen. I want this one. Okay, we do have sound. Okay. You guys hear it? Hello to all of you, the MRTA state officers, the MRTA office staff, those of you that have been chosen to lead your local units as presidents, the other unit members, and of course, our busy and fearless executive director, Jim Kreider. I must confess, I was greatly surprised when Jim called last August to report that I had been chosen as a 2020 distinguished retiree for the Missouri Retired Teachers Association. I must say that I was speechless at receiving this news. And if you ask my family, they will say that rarely ever happens. So maybe we better not go there. I am extremely honored, but also very humbled with my selection from so many worthy candidates. I have been retired for 21 years and an active member as well as an officer of the Lynn County Retired Teachers and Public School Personnel Unit. During that time, I've had many opportunities to carry out the MRTA motto, to serve, not to be served. For me, volunteering is something I truly enjoy and recognize the value of, whether it be with preschoolers, young 4-H and FFA members, or even another group, which I'm a member of, the senior citizens. One of my personal philosophies is reflected in a quote penned by J.R. Tolkien, author of The Fellowship of the Ring. He wrote, all we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. This reminds me that when I choose to do good in the world, it matters even if those things are small and seem insignificant in the bigger picture. I've been very fortunate that my husband and three daughters and their families have been supportive of the challenges I've taken on. They know we old folks are more likely to live longer if we keep moving and, are, and stay active. I appreciate them encouraging my involvement in such activities as local recycling efforts, the food pantry collections, and more recently, making COVID protective masks for my family, friends, and neighbors. For the past eight years, I've dedicated my time to serving on the board of directors for the Lynn County Senior Center. This position has allowed me to obtain and distribute information which promotes programs, policies, and activities benefiting the senior citizens in my community. Volunteering is good for the soul. I encourage all members to be as involved as they can be. And it pays to be optimistic. Try not to believe in problems, but instead label them as challenges and opportunities. Remember, even on the worst day, there is always hope. With that, I'd like to leave you with my thoughts on another meaning for the MRTA acronym as you embark on your term as unit president or as an active member of your MRTA. The M could stand for motivate, share and guide others with what you've learned. Encourage everyone to be active participants and utilize your, the talents of your members. The R we might label for recharge, take time for yourself and take care of yourself. By doing so, you should have the strength, energy and passion to pursue your personal goals as well as the goals of your unit. The T could stand for time. Use your time wisely and be able to navigate change. Evaluate all aspects of a situation or challenge. 
consider the thoughts of others before deciding on a solution or the right course to take in solving challenges. The A should stand for action. Actively lead by example, be a mentor to all members, those new ones as well as the ones that have been members for a long time. Stay involved and <clears throat> think about the MRTA mission and vision. Demonstrate your dedication to MRTA as well as your unit by answering those call to action notices and supporting Mr. Kreider's philosophies of there is strength in numbers and the world is run by those that show up. That's MRTA in action. MRTA is your friend and also the watchdog for our retirement. It's important to stand behind the organization in every way you possibly can. Thank you so much for honoring me with this award and giving me an opportunity to share my thoughts on M MRTA. And I wish you the best of luck in your year as being president and hope that your units will all be successful. Thank you. Very good. It's a little bit more. <laughs> Congratulations. We are so proud of you. Your dedication always shows right through. You work so hard for us. We love you, Mom. Okay, there you go. <laughs> That's a great. Oops. I'm going to steal that, Carolee. I've already stolen it. <laughs> I'm speechless. I didn't know that was part of the plan. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> oh dear. Did, did any of the committee chairs want to give any highlights from their reports? Did anybody have anything they wanted to share? Mm, I don't. Did, did, did everyone receive the legislative report that I finally wrote? Yes. Okay. Uh, are there any questions? I suspect that all of you who are here are very much aware of what needs to be done. We must follow what Nancy said about, and she was also present at the uh, uh, July 22nd meeting. Isn't that right, Nancy? And yes. I think I omitted putting her name in there. I was doing that from memory. Um, and so that needs to be put in there. But the important thing is, that legislation, we must, must, must watch the legislation. Last year, 349 got by us and um, we, we've we got to uh, uh, stay sharp. Um, follow some of the advice that Carol Lee has given us, definitely what Nancy has said. And at the conclusion, you will say, see that I said, our mission, we must grow our members because we're down by approximately 10%, I think is what uh, Mr. Kreider told us on the 22nd. And I don't know what the numbers will be now that um, there was the, the uh, campaign during August and September. So uh, we'll probably get an update on that. And uh, watch that legislation and mobilize call to action. Encourage everybody to participate in phone to action. I went online to see how difficult it is to sign up for those who do not want to do the text messaging. And it's simple as can be. It's just simple as, as eating your breakfast. 
Um, so uh, there, there really is no excuse. Central office has provided us with all of the means for answering those calls to action. And I know that there are some legislators who do not like the, the prepared messages. So write a personal message. Uh, get to know those people on a first name basis. Then you can write those personal messages and they will pay attention or make a trip to the Capitol. Um, there's, there, there's profit in doing that. Um, you will see that I looked up the term limiting limits on our legislators. And that I believe is also, yes, it's also included in the report. So pay attention to that. Um, some of you consider even running for office. So um, legislative day, February 8th, Capitol Blitz Day, February 8th, very, very, very important. <clears throat> legislative session starts on January 5, which is the second Wednesday after the first, or the first Wednesday, I'm sorry, excuse me. First Wednesday after the first Monday and it will run through mid-May. So January 5, you can start expecting to having your inbox bombarded with things from, um, from MRTA office and things that I will forward on. Now, one thing that I'm concerned about is when I attempted to contact individuals in the, uh, uh, about legislation in our, uh, 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 region three, well, in our, uh, yeah, region three area. Um, I don't know whether the, uh, whether the chair, the legislative chairs are still the same. And uh, since it's difficult to see all people here, I will probably just make a phone call to those individuals, check out, make certain that my contact information is correct. Because last year, um, technology or Becky failed in some respects. So I'm not going to let technology take over my life. I'm going to get in there and see what I can do. I do know, I do know that some people are, I, I, you know, I know about many of these people, but um, I do not know about some. So are there any questions that I need to try to address? And Sarah, I apologize for being so tardy. In oh, you're fine. To writing this out. I knew what I was going to do, but life, life gets hectic. Well, we had promised that we were going to email those um, reports out on the 6th, and it still happened, so we're good. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for being kind. Okay. And uh, Nancy, thanks for taking the helm. Carol Lee, you have grabbed the golden ring of life. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Dale? <clears throat> Dale Bagley? Oh, a, okay. I went to sleep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I enjoyed the, uh, what I was going to say is, I was really impressed with all the uh, reports. I read through the reports, and I thought they were, every one was good. And I thought, well, this is something that, reminded me of something that I should do, and that is uh, forward a copy of the report related to uh, retirement education to the retirement education chairman for each of the units in, in uh, uh, Region 3, because uh, somebody needs to do that in some way or other, because I really think that when you go to a meeting and you call on the uh, somebody to make a report, a lot of times they just don't have anything that they've thought of or any idea of what to think about. So uh, I think it's a pretty good idea to uh, give, them, give them some uh, information uh, that's focused right on what they do for uh, the unit and uh, go on from there. So I just want to thank uh, everybody for all they're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? As uh, this the state and regional uh, informative protective services 
So it, I, I would encourage that if your unit does not have someone designated as the, the chair of that committee for your unit, uh, try to, to uh, get someone to step up and, and take that on so I can have them as a contact. But if I do not have a contact for an individual unit, I will send that information to the unit president. So uh, this is October, which is Cybersecurity Month. So I am uh, getting some things together to try to send out to everyone to uh, just in, encourage us to be more aware of scams and things that try to get us and steal our identities and, and do all those kinds of things. And, and as uh, the daughter of a 91 and a half year old who is on the internet, um, I, uh, we, my husband and I are tech support often, and so we, uh, we help deal with those kinds of things on a regular basis too. So, uh, but there's a lot of things that are, uh, sneak up on you that can, can uh, interfere with things, uh, as far as, uh, on the internet through your phone and all those kinds of things. So we're yeah. going to, to, to inform you more. Yeah, well, I, I have it ready. So whenever you want to come back. Okay, Are, is that it? Okay, anybody else? All right. So we are ready for the MRTA report and the Amazon Smile information. I just figured out how to change that on my app now. So when I shop on my app, I can still do Amazon Smile. Yes, and I will talk about Amazon Smile at the end. I'm going to put it on my MRTF hat at the end here. But first, I want to talk about MRTA. So um, really good news, which I'm sure you have all heard by now. But you guys are getting a 5% COLA for 2022. So that is the reason everybody should be. If you, don't need, if you, if you need any other reason to join MRTA other than Nancy's four reasons, that's why 5% COLA is amazing. Um, obviously, those who are COLA capped will not get that. And then anyone who is a new retiree, you have to be retired for two Januaries before you will get a COLA. So just know that. But most people will be getting that 5% COLA, which is amazing. That'll actually be decided on October 25th at the PSRS meeting um, here in Jeff City. Um, the biggest issue we have right now is, or the biggest thing I want to talk about right now is our October is MRTA membership renewal month. Um, at the September meeting, the delegates assembly did approve a dues increase, but that does not go into effect until January 1st of 2022. So when the dues renewal notice went out on Monday of this week, so you'll be getting it in the mail. If you, if you owe for 2022, you'll be getting it in the mail unless you are um, already signed up for our auto dues deduction, but you will get it in the mail. It will say your dues are $35 and that is still correct. Your dues are $35. You can pay for three years right now. You can pay for as many years as you want before January 1st at the rate of $35 per year. So that message is important to get out. Tell people, go ahead and renew your dues. As soon as you get that renewal notice, save yourself a little bit of money. Now, after January 1st, the due structure is going to change. The base, the dues will be $44 per year, which is still, we think still a great um, a great deal because of all the benefits and discounts you get through AMBA and all the work we do for retirees. So um, we hope people will still um, not mind the $44, but if you would like to save a little bit of money, we have some discounts for you. There's two different ways. If you will sign up for automatic dues renewal through our website, or there is a paper form you can get from our office, you can sign up that way you will, we will automatically withdraw your dues each year. Um, and that will be, so then you will pay $39 per year. So you're going to save $5. And just while we're on the subject of automatic dues renewal, if you are already signed up for that, you will pay $35 this year. We've already drawn the money. And um, next year, you we will automatically draw the, the 39. You will not have to do anything. It's, it's automatic. So you, you don't have to do anything on your end. Um, but another way to save money, if you don't want to sign up for automatic dues withdrawal, we understand that that's fine. You can pay for multiple years at once. So you have to pay for a minimum of three years 
And then you can also pay the $39 rate. So it would be $117 for three years um, or, or have remaining. Yesterday, somebody asked me, well, if I pay before January 1st, can I write you a check for $350 for 10 years? And I said, yeah, absolutely. If you pay before January 1st, you can whatever you want. Now, I will say lifetime membership is $750. So keep that in mind. But if you want to pay for 10 years at $35 a year, that's fine. You are saving us money from having to mail you renewal notices, membership cards, and all that in staff time. Um, it, all that adds up. And so we're passing those some of those savings on to you. So um, associate dues are also going to go up. And just so we're clear here, associate members is anyone who is not currently receiving a re pension from PSRS or peers. So that is like if any of you have a spouse who did another job and they retired from some other uh, occupation, they could be an associate member. Um, so associate members, their dues are going to go up. They were $15. They're going to be $25. And basically, um, I, the, there is no, um, I don't know how to say this. We're not making any money on associate members. Basically, the $25 covers because they get all the same benefits you get. They get all of our newsletters, all of our mailings. The $25 is basically just covering the cost of the mailings and things of that nature. Um, that is also um, active associate members. So they also will pay $25. They Active associate members are anyone who's still teaching or working in a school. So um, anyone who is still active but wants to support the association and stay informed, that is $25 per year. Um, so there is no discount for the associate membership. Um, it's just 25 regardless. There's no, if you sign up for automatic renewal, there's no discount or anything like of that nature. Um, so uh, you got, I think Nancy already talked about um, the 90 years plus. Um, so I'm not gonna cover that, um, but th that is also something we're, we're doing. Um, and Becky talked about legislative session and February 8th is legislative day. I just want to remind you too that Legislative session starts on January 5th. Um, so just be aware, pre-filing of bills starts in December. Um, so encourage phone to action. Like Becky said, it's so easy. And if you, even if you don't want to sign up for the text version of it, we we email you the, the um, you can use the app online too. So it's still, it's so, so easy compared to the old way we used to do it. So um and we will always still send call to action emails. Call to action will always come by email. So don't think that if you sign up for phone to action, you're not going to be able to do it the old way. You still will. This is just an, a supplement to that. But what makes it great is if you're sitting in a doctor's office and you get a call to action, you don't have to wait to get home to do it. You can do it right there on your phone immediately. So anyway, um, and that if anybody does want to sign up for that, if you go to mrta.org, our website, click on the legislative tab, just scroll down a bit and it's there's a link there and a video that explains it. So um, the 2021 MRTA Unit President Summit, I know we have a lot of unit presidents on here, so I just wanna talk about this. We have not, on Friday, tomorrow, we will decide the date and the location. The date will probably be March 8th and 9th. There is one hotel that we are considering that is um, that can't do those dates. So don't put that in stone, but it's probably gonna be March 8th and 9th. And the meeting location will probably be in Columbia or at the Lake of the Ozarks. But again, that will be decided tomorrow. Um, we have bids in from several different hotels um, and including Capitol Plaza, but um, we had a lot of complaints about Capitol Plaza this year. So it is something we are considering to move locations. Now, um, that's really all I have for MRTA. Although I do want, before I switch to my MRTF subjects, I wanna thank all of you because, you know, you, you, unit presidents, unit leaders, region leaders, you guys are the key to MRTA success and you don't know how important you are to us. I, I mean, I, I can't stress that enough that without you guys and your support and your help getting our message out, we would not be as, as successful as we are, especially when it comes to the legislature. So. I just want to voice from the office's perspective how much we appreciate that. Um, so thank you all for being here today too um, and for having me. Um, the foundation, we I, I don't know if you guys know this, but last year our $10,000 raffle winner was one of your own. Um, Pamela's husband, David, was our $10,000 raffle winner. So it does happen. Uh, people in your area can win. Um, 
they will decide on December 14th this year if we will still do a raffle, but they are considering breaking the prize up into multiple, like maybe maybe one $5,000 prize, maybe two $2,500 prizes. I mean, it hasn't been decided yet, but just know that the raffle, when it comes out in January, is probably going to look a little different for 2022, but that raffle is so important to MRTF. Last year's raffle raised $70,000 for wow. classroom grants, which is amazing. That's by far way more than we've ever raised. Um, so that is going to be so important. So when you get your January newsletters from MRTA, which is when our next newsletter will come out, there will be raffle tickets in there. And we just ask you guys, even if you don't want to buy them, sell them to any, anyone who's over the age of 18, regardless of whether they live in the state of Missouri or not, can buy those raffle tickets. So um, buy one yourself or sell them to even if every member would buy one ticket, that's over $300,000 that we could use for grants. So, uh, but if you don't want to buy the tickets, if you don't like raffles, if you think that's gambling, you maybe um, support the, the foundation in another way. And we totally understand and appreciate that too. Speaking of other ways to support the foundation, um, I'll talk about Amazon Smile here in a moment, but the we do an end of year mailing. We do not send that out to everyone, but we do send it to anyone who has donated to the foundation in the past and has donated over $100. So um, not everyone's going to get that, but if you know um, of anyone who is a generous donor, uh, please remind them that we would appreciate that again this year. Um, that mailing will probably go out in a couple weeks. Um, and again, it doesn't go to everyone, but it does go to quite a few people. So our, um, we really appreciate your support on that. But Amazon Smile is the newest way for the foundation to make money. And when I sent the email out yesterday, I did include um, a, a document on there that explains Amazon Smile. But for those of you who don't know, um, if you buy anything on Amazon, you can choose a charity to donate a portion of your purchases to. So it isn't any, it, it, it doesn't make the prices any different. It's literally like 0.2% or something of every item you purchase is eligible to go to a charity. So for instance, I buy, I don't know if you guys buy from Amazon, but during COVID, I found I was buying a lot of things online. Um, that weren't groceries and I bought almost all of them from Amazon. And so I had put the foundation down as my Amazon Smile Charity and I raised a loan, $4, which I know is not anything to brag about, but when you consider that it's such a small portion and, and, and it, it's cost you nothing, it's literally just a little bit of your time, but those $4 over the course of a year, if everybody's doing it, adds up to a lot of money. And so all of those dollars will go again to classroom grants. Um, that is the foundation's main um, project. They don't really have any other projects they spend money on. So almost all their fundraising does go to classroom grants. And um, and I'm sure you all know, you've probably seen pictures of grants that were presented in your area. And Nancy talked about her experience in St. Louis. Getting into the schools and giving those grants out, first of all, I'm sure is a ton of fun for um, you guys. But also it, it, it really affects the classrooms. I mean, we have so many classrooms who, we had one person who literally wanted a, I forgot what, she had a fun name for it, but it was a closet that she could have shoes and clothes and food and, um, you know, toiletries for her underprivileged children. So if a kid came to school and he needed, she had, she had a teacher, she had a student who came to, sh to school in his mom's shoes. I mean, she, she got him a pair of shoes and Anyway, things of that nature. And then sometimes it's not that dire. Sometimes it's more, I want the kids to do STEM things, or I want them to have a experience using technology. And so sometimes it's, it's that, but we also have people who literally need shoes for children. So we, we cannot tell you how much we appreciate any generosity and, and help that we can get for the foundation. And at MRTA, we, we appreciate that because it is the best public relations tool we have. Um, to get into schools. Um, and Kayla's going to talk about Cash for Classrooms in a moment here, but um, that is another tool that you're going to learn about that is another great way for us to get into schools. Um, so I just can't put into words enough how much that really helps MRTA, even though it's a foundation activity. 
Um, and the last thing I forgot to mention, um, silent auction. So at the September annual meeting, thank you so much to anyone who donated to the silent auction. We had tons of really amazing prod, uh, baskets and things to bid on for our silent auction. Some people just gave money. We raised over, um, the last number I got was $11,711 for classroom grants. So thank you so much to anyone who came and bought items, who donated, um, who sent in money. We, we really appreciate that as well. Um, that was really all I have. Um, I guess I'll turn it over to Kayla now because Kayla is going to tell you guys about Cash for Classrooms. And the Cash for Classrooms application was included in the email that I sent to you guys yesterday. So if anything she talks about, you want more information, she can, she'll probably tell you this, but it is all in the email we sent you. So Kayla, you're up. Hi, good morning, everybody. I hope by now everybody's a little bit familiar with our Cash for Classrooms program. We did start it this year. This year was our guinea pig. Um, the start of Cash for Classrooms for next year, it'll run on a calendar year, so January 1st to December 31st. MRTA has allocated $15,000 to this program, and this program is geared towards getting grant money to teachers and their classrooms for their projects and a way for the unit to be more involved and help decide who they get to help and who they want to help. So how this works is a unit can go on to donorschoose.org and with that program, they can search any project they want, whether it be in their area or a different part of Missouri. Um, we recommend you try to find a project in your area, but if you can't find a project in your area, you can go meet with your local teachers, inform them of Donors Choose and help them put a project on Donors Choose themselves so you have a project to fund. Um, we're finding that not a lot of people know about donors too, so we're trying to educate them on that as well. And I know Amba is familiar with this too, and Gary can probably speak on that. Um, but with that, when you have a project you want to fund towards, we ask that you at least donate $100 to that program. And what you can do is you can fill out the application. I know Sarah shared this packet of information with you, so in there you will have a copy of the application. Fill it out to the best of your ability and you can mail a $100 check or you can call in and pay with a credit card, however you want to do it or cash. Send that to me and then I will go online to donorschoose.org. I will find the project. I will donate your $100 and also match that with the $100 from MRTA to help fund that project. The nice thing about this program is that we get to help teachers in our classroom and also the students along the way, but the unit itself is the focus here. You get to choose. We're not choosing, you get to choose this time. And if you wanna fund five classrooms, that's, that's great. However, MRTA will only be able to donate $100 one time unless we have funds left over at the end of the year. And then in that following January, if funds are left over, we are asking our units of excellence to submit another application to be able to fund another classroom project. This year with the report, we had three units uh, submit an application for cash for classrooms, and they all three were very successful. Uh, two of those were fully funded with our donations um, from, and that was Butler County and Cape Girardeau, so congrats to them. And then our other one was uh, fully funded once an, um, a corporation came through and fully funded their projects. But I, I've helped the teacher work through with getting on donors too, and it's a very simple process. Um, just to kind of fill you guys into on how this works, because I know teachers have asked questions about this. So if you want to inform them, you can. And we also have a handout on this as well. It's included in your packet. And if not, I can get you one or Sarah can get you one. But teachers, it's, all they have to do is go online to Donors Choose. They submit their project. And when their project is fully funded, Donors Choose themselves, they go out, they get the supplies that were requested with the money that was given to them online at Donors Choose. And then they send that straight to the teacher. So, and if for some reason, and there is a, there's a timeline, I think it's about three to four months. If they don't get enough money to fund their project, you're not just donating money and then it's gone. That's not how this works. That money would be allocated to them. They can put their project back online or they could do another project. But nine times out of 10, their project is going to be funded one way or another. For instance, if they're asking for $500, your unit donates 100, MRTA matches at 100, and say, oh, well, wait, they still need $300. A lot of times there are corporations that come in or larger companies or even smaller companies that come in and they can fully fund a project and they use it as a tax write-off. So 
nine times out of 10, these projects are getting funded. But again, it's your unit that is helping this teacher in their classroom. And that's what this program is all about. And if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to ask me now, or you can reach out to me or Sarah. We both are familiar with this, but that's kind of how this works. Um, if you don't want me to do the donation online, I will say that your unit themselves can do the donation online. You can go on and donate your $100. Let me know, send me your application, and then I'll go donate MRTA's $100, or I can send you a $100 check and you can take care of it all. We just need to have proof that what's happened is happening. So when I go on and line and donate, I email you that the donation has been made for $200, or if you're don donating 200 and I'm matching 100, whatever that may be. So you have options, but the unit at least has to donate $100. So. And I would add to that, Kayla, is, um, and you kind of got into that, where it, if it, I would probably try to select a teacher who's not asking for an exorbitant amount of money. You know, Kayla had said $500. That's probably your max because that way you are guaranteeing in a way or you're, you're more likely to guarantee that the project will actually get funded. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually don't know, Kayla, that I included the handout for teachers. So whenever I send after this meeting, I'm going to send this video out to all of Region 3. I will make sure that is included. Perfect. Perfect. But yeah, any questions, feel free to ask me. I've uh, <laughs> I've did my research on this to get some background on it and help and walk a teacher through it. And her project was fully funded and she was so excited. So the excitement these teachers have from having another avenue for them to get money to help their students out is just, it's, it's a pretty awesome feeling. So you all should be proud of yourselves. Yeah. I have a question. I know with the grants, yeah. they usually take a picture or something and show as a follow-up as to how the grant money was put to use or whatever, does the Casper Classrooms have a similar follow-up? Yes, so we asked the same th uh, The same thing is that you can meet with that teacher and if you can get in touch with them, meet with that teacher and ask her for a picture or if you can go there and get a picture, do a little write-up, kind of the same thing as with our classroom grant program. We do ask that you do that. Sometimes we know that can be hard to do, especially during this pandemic, but if you can do that, we would appreciate that um, so we can get the word out on that as well. I saw another good way of, you know, promoting MRTA yes. and everything in the classroom yeah. or in the school. 100%. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Can I really say, open. yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Can I say one thing? Um, one of my units of excellence did that, and uh, the grant was, or the money was awarded to the teacher. They couldn't get in the school last year, so I think they're they are going to, uh, this year sometime to go and say, all right, this is this is who we are, and and this is. Uh, why you got uh, the money that you did. But that uh, donors choose is statewide. Uh, in fact, it's probably nationwide. It wide. It and is, yeah. so so it's a it's a great program. And and a lot of the active teachers, especially the young ones, know that. And, and they're on there all the time. So I'm sure that uh, if your area doesn't know it, take them information, you know, or just or email them information for it. Because it, it's painless really to do it so it's great pr any more questions in regards to cash for classrooms anything all right no well with that i will hand that back over to dana or sarah whoever wants to take it from here dana's up thanks um next we have gary DeVito, the district manager of Eastern Missouri for AMBA. And Gary, take your time. Okay. <laughs> Tell us what you've got. All right. Sounds good. Uh, well, thank you uh, for inviting me here. I appreciate it. Nice to see all these happy faces. And uh, good to see Nancy again. Just saw her on Tuesday uh, in Van Buren. Uh, and that was a great time. Um, uh, before I get started, uh, I did want to ask a question. Uh, does anybody know why math books are so unhappy? No, why are math books so unhappy? <laughs> because they are full of problems. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, um, thanks very again. True. Uh, what's, what's, <laughs> That's very I, true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I want to thank you all for the service that you've provided uh, over the years. Uh, it's, it's invaluable. 
Uh, and uh, you can't, speaking of math, I think it's incalculable also, uh, the, the lives that you impact, how you impact them, and uh, what that means uh, for those kids' future. So uh, thank you for that. Um, and again, thank you for, be, for allowing me to be here. What I'd like to do, I, I will kind of give a heads up uh, sometimes I have a problem with, with my Zoom where all of a sudden it decides it, it, it doesn't want to share. I'm a sharing kind of person, but I'm going to try to share here and hopefully my computer will cooperate. Um, and uh, I won't, uh, if I go away, I'll come back as quickly as I possibly can. <laughs> so just keep in mind, uh, let's see if this is going to work. All right, um, here we go. Okay, can you all see that? It says Gary, ah, uh, yes. Okay, great. Um, I'll go through this uh, relatively quickly. Um, we, uh, we appreciate the partnership. Um, this partnership just started, um, uh, as, I, as I mentioned on Tuesday, I think it was two minutes right before COVID hit last year. Um, and uh, um, I, we, we, I think we did make progress over the year despite COVID. Um, I think we're really starting to see a lot more progress now uh, that things are, are opening up a little bit more. Uh, but we really do uh, appreciate the, the partnership with you. Uh, and um, we're looking forward to developing the partnership even further uh, now as time goes on. Uh, just a little bit about me. Um, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this because I know our time is limited. Um, uh, I st first started with AMBA back in 2007, um, and uh, there was a little bit of a, of a hiccup in between. Um, I left and then I came back, and, and now I'm the district manager over Illinois as well as the east side of Missouri. And I really do uh, thoroughly enjoy uh, working with, with all of you. Uh, I've been married. It'll be 33 years tomorrow, um, so I'm thankful for that. Um, um, my wife is, must be extremely patient, is about all I could say. Um, I do have two boys, Michael and Stephen. I'll just briefly say that Stephen just got married a few weeks ago, just moved to Columbia to be with his new bride, who is finishing out school there. Uh, and he's actually finishing off school online. Uh, he's going to be a teacher uh, focused on special ed. So uh, real, real thrilled about that. Have a couple dogs. It's Cooper and Bear. Um, Bear is about 95 pounds. He's in my room here sleeping. When he sleeps, he snores. So if you hear that, that's, that's him, not me. I can assure you it's him. Um, and I do, uh, I do enjoy a lot of different hobbies, uh, racquetball, boating, uh, a lot of church activities. Um, while I'm not a teacher, uh, I am a leader for Awana. I don't know if, if anybody knows what Awana is, but we had that last night. That's where we teach the Bible to, to kids. So I guess I do a little bit of teaching. Uh, at any rate, so AMBA has been doing this for 40 years now. Uh, we work with 70 state associations across the country, uh, represents uh, about 17.6 million folks across the country. So why is that important? One, um, most of these associations are retired teachers. <clears throat> We've had, we have a lot of experience with it. Um, when you have a group that large, uh, it allows us to bring forth the best benefits at the best rates, tremendous discounts, and we'll touch on each one of these individually here in, in a little bit, but um, gives you a lot of clout um, um, when it comes to these benefits also. It really is, a, it's, a, it, it's an important aspect of it, so uh, just something to be aware of. Uh, and again, because we, we've been doing this for such a long time, um, we know uh, the most important aspect to your association is membership. So when we're visiting with retired teachers across the state that are not members, um, first and foremost, we want to make them a member. Um, that is the most critical aspect. We know that that is the lifeblood of your association. Uh, and I, I mentioned it on Tuesday too, I, I don't understand why a retired teacher would not want to be association, uh, a member of the MRTA. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, we know that you're, you are the primary pension watchdog, um, that 5% COLA. I mean, without the MRTA, would that be happening? Probably not. 
So um, really, really, we again, we understand that importance. And uh, first and foremost, again, we, we're making sure that, that folks are members. Uh, and we want to work with you on that. So, um, uh, you know, we can have a further discussion about that. We just touched on this. Um, again, we know that the MRTA is the primary pension watchdog uh, for your pension. I'm going to skip past this stuff, uh, some of this. Um, so what does AMBA do? We provide supplemental health insurance benefits, travel discounts, technology and retail discounts, dental and vision programs, uh, investment products, as well as life insurance. Uh, and again, our, our goal is just to make sure that everybody understands, uh, you know, how all these programs work. Um, all of you uh, have access to us uh, for a free benefit review. Um, and, you know, the question becomes, how many folks go to the doctor uh, at least once a year? Um, and I'm guessing probably just about everybody. Uh, it's important, obviously, uh, to know what your health is, your but calories. also your I'm your well overall taken. health as far as your financials go and, and, and how you're protected. So you have access to a free benefit review. Um, I would highly advise that you do that. All we do is review what you have, um, show you where potential gaps are. Um, sometimes we may have something that will help with that gap. Sometimes we don't, but we're at least going to let you know um, what you do and don't have uh, and gives you some peace of mind to know, um, you know, where those things are. Uh, as I just mentioned, I, I, again, I don't understand why a retired teacher would not be a member of the MRTA, you know, whether it's $35 or 44 uh, and even if it were 70 or $80 or a hundred and, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not advocating that you should increase it even more, but um, again, the MRTA is protecting the pension first and foremost. That that is that's so important, and why people wouldn't be a member just because of that, I don't understand. But what I can add uh, is that with the discounts that you all have access to through AMBA, as a member of the MRTA, those discounts without a doubt will absolutely positively pay for the cost of membership each and every year. It'll probably pay for it you know, four or five times over. And you can simply go to myambadiscounts.com. Uh, there's also an application uh, that you can put on your smartphone called Passport. So whenever you're traveling, it will follow you. And you can, you can see the local businesses wherever you're at that you have discounts to. So um, I, I had mentioned a couple days ago, my wife and I went to Nashville uh, a few weeks ago. And what I did is I went to Priceline and I got the best price I could for a specific hotel. And then I went to my AMBA discounts and this is the same hotel, same dates and everything. Uh, and it was about 25% less through my AMBA discounts. Um, so it really, it does make a difference. There's no doubt about it. That's just one example. Uh, but there's so many uh, opportunities for saving money in your everyday life with this program. Again, this is just another reason when you're speaking with retired teachers that are not a member, again, this will, without a doubt, it will pay for membership. So with that, with the insurance benefits that we provide, um, there's reasons for all of things that we do have. Um, and again, I'll, I'll kind of go through this relatively quickly. Um, Medicare uh, is cutting over $716 billion in benefits between 2013 and 2022. 2022 is coming up and they're already talking about, okay, what, what other benefits are we going to cut beyond 2022? So it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And the reason is that Medicare is not the most solvent of institutions um, and they're hurting financially is really what it amounts to. So these cuts uh, cause surprises for people, uh, and they have more out-of-pocket costs than they would have expected uh, prior to that. Um, and these are where some of the gaps are. And I will say for those folks that, that are not Medicare age, medical insurance follows suit. They're, they're you know, kind of doing the same thing as Medicare. So 
the gaps are going to be pretty much the same for folks before Medicare as well as folks on Medicare. But in the end, um, there, there are gaps um, for, you know, when it comes to cancer, heart and stroke diagnoses. Um, with cancer, a lot of folks are surprised to hear that 60%, that's six zero, 60% 60 of all cancer treatment costs are non-medical. If it's non-medical, it won't be covered by medical insurance because it's not medical. So what does that mean? Um, well, it could be wigs, it could be plastic surgery, um, travel costs, um, you know, there's places like MD Anderson down uh, in uh, the Houston area that's world renowned for their cancer treatment. If you travel down there, your travel costs, your hotel costs, those types of things will not be covered. And that can become costly uh, depending on what the treatment is. There's also alternative treatments um, that by definition are not FDA approved, so they're not gonna be covered by medical insurance um, a lot of those alternative treatments are very effective for people, uh, and um, uh, you have to pay for it out of pocket. Well, you have access to a program called Flexible Choice, and it allows you to get paid a lump sum of $5,000 to $75,000 upon first diagnosis of, uh, of cancer. Um, so that's there for you. And we have the same program with heart and stroke. Um, you can see here home health and facility care, so long-term care, uh, you can call this. Um, we do have a number of different programs to help with this, and if you're not aware of it, Medicare, there isn't any medical insurance that's going to help with long-term care. It's just not going to happen. They're not, it's not defined as a medical need, um, and we have a 70% chance of having some kind of a need at some point in our life. So uh, this is one of the biggest gaps that there are. Uh, and again, we have a number of different options. And because we have such a large group, um, we've got tremendous economies of scale. These are you know, very inexpensive compared to what you can get on your own. And I'll also say that the underwriting guidelines for some of these programs are very lenient. So um, for those folks that might have a health blemish or two, we probably still have an answer for you. Um, so uh, just something to be aware of. Um, medical transport, uh, that this is ambulance rides, that type of thing. Uh, this is another pretty big gap uh, that people are unaware of. We do have a, a program called MASA. It's an air and ground ambulance plan. Uh, and we've seen retirees across the state taking advantage of this. A lot of folks uh, have uh, been using uh, a flight for life service. There's a number of different ones. They're kind of regional. Um, and uh, they found a, a few pretty big gaps with those medical air providers. Um, MASA will cover you anywhere. Uh, not only across the state, but across the country, and it gives you worldwide coverage. Again, for any kind of an air or ground ambulance, you'll never have to pay a dime um, out of pocket for anything related to that. There's no deductibles. Everything is taken care of. Um, and then we do have a uh, final expense program, various types of life insurance. And then finally, um, we have uh, an investment program uh, called Asset Protection Investment um, that has been really popular. Uh, it has averaged over the last 10 years, one of the programs is 4.19% return on your money, and another is 5.65%. Uh, I had a, at least one or two retirees that have called that a, a CD killer because, well, I think he said that he has to pay his bank right now to to, to keep his money there, but uh, <laughs> CDs aren't paying a whole lot in this program. Um, allows you to take advantage of the upside in the market, but you're guaranteed to never, ever, ever lose money, and it is tax deferred, so it's been uh, a pretty popular program. And um, let's see. I think I covered that pretty quickly. Um, I will say, if you have a smartphone, you can actually hold it up to your screen if you hover it over that funny looking box there in the middle, that's called a QR code, it'll bring up um, an, an AMBA website where you can click on different things if you want to find out more about any of these benefits. You can also call me at this phone number or uh, you can send me an email. 
uh, at this email address that's on the screen. And uh, I'm happy to help you uh, in any way. Are there, I went through that really, 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 really quickly. Um, if the, anybody have any questions? Okay. I don't see any raised hands. Um, uh, again, uh, you know, I encourage everybody take advantage of these benefits, uh, have a benefit review. You know, all we do is review things with you, gives you some peace of mind knowing what you do have, what you don't have. Uh, and if there's something we can help with beyond that, we're happy to help. Thanks again. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, now we are ready for the PSRS Peers Report from Maria Walden, Director of Legislation and Policy. Good morning. It is great to see everyone. That's for darn sure. Um, <laughs> I, I wanted to thank Pamela for inviting me and Sarah for coordinating this. I appreciate it. I had a little bit of a meeting that I couldn't push. And so when we were able to push it, I was able to sneak in. So I appreciate all the effort that everyone went through. I wanna thank you guys for all your hard work and your dedication to public education and the retirement systems. We right now have around 49 newly elected House and Senate members. And with COVID, every bit of, uh, every bit of assistance from you guys, every contact helps me do my job better and helps the retirement system in and of themselves. So I thank you so much for that. I also want to say thank you for Legislative Day. Legislative Day, you guys, from what I understand, you had over 9,500 9, contacts with Missouri uh, General Assembly. That is a very impressive number, and you guys should be proud of all the work that you've done. I'm going to kind of go through the, the systems where we're at, that sort of thing, and I can tell you we've had a really good, phenomenal year. Um, we were created in 1946 as an independent trust fund for the public teachers. And then later on, I, I, we were developed for the educational employees in Missouri. Our goals have not really changed for the last 70 plus years. The first of our goals has always been to provide retirement security for Missouri's educators and education employees after a full career of service. And what does that mean? We get a lot of criticism that for a teacher who just comes in, our retirement system doesn't do anything for them. So if you come into teaching for two years, it really isn't benefiting any of those retirees that are those active members. And that's correct. We aren't meant to benefit a person who comes into education and, and then decides to leave. We're there for full career, for people who give their life and their career for education. That's what our benefit is there for. The other part of ours is to help school districts attract and retain the best and the brightest uh, to teach Missouri school kids. And then the last is to manage us in a prudent and cost efficient manner. We are defined benefit plan. I normally go through this with everyone just so that you're aware. A defined benefit plan is a plan that is established by statute with a formula factor after years of service. It gives you a pension for the rest of your life. When you retire and if you choose a beneficiary option, it gives them a benefit for it. A 401k, a defined contribution plan is very different. That is a set amount of money that you put in and with whatever investment earnings you're able to get is there. And we get a lot of questions about this from members. We get a lot of questions about this from elected officials. And normally every four years, we see a bill that's introduced that tries to move our teachers into a defined contribution plan, which would be very harmful for the systems. And it would be harmful, I believe, for education in the state of Missouri. Um, PSRS has done a phenomenal year this year. We are, our assets have grown to over $58 billion. Um, so if you can kind of take that into perspective, last year when I was talking to this group, it was right, it was about 12 billion off of that. So right around 47. So that's how great the investment year was. If you take our 58 billion, you, retire, you divide them by the entire population in the state of Missouri or in the nation, they would each get $176. How many people does that cover? We cover over 286,000. If you look at how many lives that we impact, and how many people are impacted by the systems. You could fill, I'm using this because we're in football season, but the Chiefs Stadium, you could fill it with retirees four times over, if that gives you an idea of how many retirees we have. Our fiscal year ended with a 28.7% return right now. 
We assume that we're going to earn 7.3. So a 28.7 is a phenomenal year. It's one of the best years that we have on record as far as our investment returns go. We're still around as of the last June, we were around 84. We will get our new actuarial numbers, our new funding numbers, which are important just to show the health of the system. We will get those at the end of the October at the October board meeting. So stay tuned for that. We are the 46th largest public pension plan in the nation and the 105th largest in the world. And just as a background with that, we are the largest, largest public pension plan in the state of Missouri. If you took our assets and then the 126 other defined benefit plans and combined them all, we still have more assets than every other plan. So that kind of tells you the benefit that is out there for our retirees. We have over 286,000 members. We cover 534 school districts in the state, except for St. Louis and Kansas City that have their own plan. And we cover most two-year colleges and there are 12 of those in the state that we cover. Right now, we're over 100,000 retirees and beneficiaries who, we receive, who receive more than $3.2 billion annually. From that, about 89% of that stays in the state. There is a chart on our website and we use it and it's in almost all the brochures that MRTA puts out and that we put out. It shows the, it's a map of uh, the state of Missouri and where those funds are going. We had a member of ours who did a speech down in uh, the Boot Hill and the amount of money that was pushed back into that little county was 300 million from the retirees. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of economic engine as far as that's concerned. For every dollar that is spent in Missouri, it generates right around $6 in economic activity. It creates about 50,000 uh, 50, jobs. To keep that in perspective on our retirees and what the difference is, as I mentioned, between a 401k and a defined benefit plan. Our defined benefit plan has a, over 100,000 retirees. We have right now over 14,000 retirees that are over 80. We have 200, uh, 2,400 that are over 90, and we have right around 70 that are over 100. Our oldest PSRS retiree is 112, and our oldest peers retiree is right around 104. And what I love to tell people about that is when you look at how much an investment advisor will tell you that you need to save to be adequately funded in, a, in your retirement years, they normally budget for you to live till you're about 85 years of age. For those members of ours, those 2,400 members that are over 90 years of age, they would have had a, been hard served to have the retirement savings that they needed to go into their final years. And because of that, there's a huge benefit that the system provides for our teachers' life, lifetime from beginning to end. For every pension dollar, roughly 66 cents of that comes from our investment earnings, 18 cents comes from our members, and then 16 comes from our employers and their deferred wages. The COLA provision, and we like to talk about this because the good news on the plan is inflation's been high, which is good for our retirees in a way with the defined benefit plan. So the COLA is one of the most expensive provisions of our plan. Uh, last year's CPI as of June came back at 5.3915. According to our board policy and according to statute, anything over five requires a COLA given of 5%. So our retirees, the board will take a vote of this in October, but our retirees should be seeing a 5% increase in their, in their pension this year, starting in January, if they've been retired more than two years. So that kind of gives you an idea of the overall value. Currently, our CPI is at 0.688. We need two to give a two, and we're right on our way to giving that again uh, for next year. So we're kind of excited about the process moving forward. I like to tell this story. When I first started working in the General Assembly, I stopped in, and there was a doorman there who became really good friends of, my, of mine. And he had indicated that he was a retired teacher. And it's a shame that I didn't look back on it and remember better, but at that time I wasn't working for teachers, but he told me his starting salary, I believe when he started teaching, it was a one schoolhouse, one room schoolhouse, and it was $300 a month. And he said, by the time he retired, he said, I wasn't making more than right around, I think it was 35 is what he gave me. 
his retirement benefit kept up with inflation. And by the time he, uh, by the time he was deep into retirement and he was working for them on the side, he was able to earn so much more and have so much more benefit than he would have had had that number been stagnant and never moved. It is one of the most expensive pieces of our plan, but it is the best part of our plan as far as I'm concerned, because it makes sure that our retirees don't stay stagnant to when they retire. It actually moves with them. And because our retirees live so long, we really need that COLA piece in place. So it's been a great year overall. Um, I can touch on, I don't know how the time is, and I'm going to lean towards you guys to let me know if there's enough time. But um, there's a couple of legislative issues that probably are going to come back up uh, next session that we're going to probably want to look at and, and keep an eye on. One of those was an alternative licensure bill that came up uh, last year. We fixed it in order for there not to be a cost to the systems, but it is an uh, issue that will impact education overall. And so because of that, we're extremely concerned about it. There's a couple of working after retirement issues that are out there. I wanna say, I don't know if any of you guys are still working and returning to work after retirement for a school district. Anyone still working, even though you're retired? We have some people that you can't see that are, yeah. Okay, so those people, and if you are returning to work for a covered school district, the governor has issued a waiver. He issued the waiver back in August. He's extended that waiver. Currently, there are no limitations on working after retirement due to that waiver. That is set to expire December 31st unless he continues that moving on. So just as a heads up for those that are working and returning to work after retirement, that's an issue that potentially uh, we'll see moving forward in the future. And then 2.55, I want to thank MRTA. They were a leader in this last year and the bill made it through the House. It got stopped in the Senate. We're going to hopefully push it again this year. It's an advantage to our active members and trying to keep teachers in the classroom a little bit longer and has no cost to the system. Uh, I want to leave you with a couple of thoughts. And one of those is you guys are a phenomenal organization. You keep aware of what's going on. You keep engaged. I appreciate that. Stay active, stay engaged, and keep doing what you're doing. What you're doing is working. It is making a difference with the General Assembly, and I really do appreciate that. It helps the system because I can't be everywhere, and with 49 newly elected members, it makes it a little bit onerous to try and figure out who all those people are, but we really do appreciate everything you guys do for the systems and everything you've done for retirement and for education. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Is there any questions? Does anyone have any questions? Someone is calling, I think. <laughs> That's okay. Well, listen, it is good to see you guys. If I can do anything else or if you have any questions, uh, Sarah has my contact information. Jane has my contact information. So does Pamela. So any of you can reach out. Oh, and I see Carol Lee is in too. I haven't seen you in forever. I miss your pumpkin bread. Oh, anyway, <laughs> that's all I wanted to say. Thank you guys so much for the invitation to talk to you. And if I can do anything for you in the future, please reach out. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Yeah. Okay, everyone. Does anybody have anything else that we need to cover or anything? I just want to say thank you and thank you and thank you to everybody or whatever, and Sarah and chair people or whatever, Maria, Gary, everybody. Um, I really appreciate everybody getting things on here and getting going. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. <laughs> thank you from me. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, here we go. No, 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 where's the toilet? My hand up, there we go. I got one. Okay. I just got to uh, thank the Lynn County group for uh, organizing this. I thought you did a great job. Thank you. Thank you very much. We would have liked to have met in person, but it just didn't work out. So um, I do want to remind you that this uh Zoom meeting has been recorded and it will be uploaded soon so you can let your people that weren't able to attend know so that they can not miss any any information. Um, it'll have a link to all Region 3 members. 
Um, if we don't have anything, I'm just going to thank you for attending and giving your time. And you have a great rest of your day. I'm going to rest all. up. My mom and I are making 13 Texas sheet cakes tomorrow. So yeah. I'm rest. So <laughs> we'll talk. We'll see you all later. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank Bye -bye. you.